Hello and welcome to another Ginger Mathematician video. I'm sure this is a video you've been waiting for for many weeks and many months. And these are my prediction videos for the exams coming up in the October, November exam season 2024. The paper two being on the 8th of October and the paper four being on the 16th of October. Now I thought I'd share from my previous prediction video. Again, I'll pop that up there so you can check it out. Some of the comments that I had from my previous predictions, you can see here Quenton got himself an A star in maths using the prediction video, so really well done to him. We've got our friend here from Zimbabwe getting 77%, so a B on the maths extended. This uh, person here, Kelvin got A in math, so well done on him as well, and got an A down here as well. So these predictions, I've been doing these now for a couple of years, they've been very, very useful to previous student cohorts, and hopefully by taking the information in this packed video, you can get that information you need to get those top grades. All right, let's go straight into my paper two predictions here. And the first thing we're going to look at is probability. It is up here 106%. Probability has always been a big topic and it does sort of fluctuate between that almost certain and certain category. Now this question six here is a very, very typical question. Again, using probability in a table and then using this idea of expected probability here. That's a very common way they can do it. The alternative is a more difficult question towards the end of the paper where you have to use some kind of tree diagram. It usually oscillates between one and the other. On to sequences, slightly down here at 88%, so it's now in the almost certain category. Again, this is a very, very typical question. Work out the next term, usually a one mark question, and then finding out the nth term of the sequence. Usually this will either be a linear sequence of some kind, or like in the example here, or a quadratic. They often like putting quadratic sequences in two. And again, it will be a few extra marks as well. Again, almost certain, but I'd still highly recommend you revise this topic. On to statistics, again, appears a lot in paper two and paper four. Again, we're talking about paper two here, 112%, again, in that certain category. It can integrate itself into the papers quite a lot. Here is a very typical stem and leaf diagram and then some kind of averages. That's quite common. They could also ask you to work with pie charts, something like that, particularly on paper two. Again, cumulative frequency and box plots and histograms that can appear across paper two and paper four, usually more on the paper four, however. On to variation and proportion and no change at 76%. So we're still at almost certain. What they have tried to do, I think I've mentioned this in previous prediction videos, is they've tried to make these questions a bit harder than in the past. And this is very typical. Again, question 25, right towards the end of the paper, where they say W is proportional in some way to Y, and then Y is proportional in some way to another variable. And then we need to work out that variable in terms of the last one. This is something they've been adding into the papers over the last couple of years, you want to get the top marks, those A and A stars, this is something you should revise in great depth. On to percentage calculations, a little bit down here at 71%. That's not an issue because you'll see what happens on paper four. Again, this is a very, very typical question. $4,000 with a rate of compound interest. One thing that's happened in a very, very recent paper is they put in a simple interest question to really make sure you know the difference between simple and compound interest. If you find that a topic you struggle with, then do check out the video above with all of IGCSE percentages going through those two key words. On to speed, distance, time has always been a very, very common topic. And here at 106%, we are slightly up here. It's in the certain category. Again, this can be a distance time graph or a speed time graph. Those are the two different things. Here we've got a speed time graph, which means you need to work with acceleration and then know how to use the graph to actually work out the distance traveled. Again, very typical paper two question that we see here. Around in the middle of the paper, so question 13, Particularly if you're making sure you're getting those B grade questions absolutely secure. That's really, really important to know this topic. On to indices here at 88%. So we are slightly down into the almost certain category. However, these are usually short questions to answer. This is a very common one here. So we have 216Y to the power of 216 or to the power of two thirds. They love putting this question in where you have a coefficient in front and you have to apply the two thirds to both parts of what's in the bracket. 
Again, important topic to cover, usually not that many marks, but it could be that difference between a B and an A, or an A and an A star. On to fraction skills, and I cannot go on about this enough, particularly in 2024, again, whopping 159%. Generally, there will always be at least one of these questions here, so question nine here, where you have to add or subtract or multiply or divide fractions together. Get a clear example here, and it says without using a calculator. Now, my little trick here is you can always use your calculator to check your answer. No one will ever stop you doing that. So when you actually do this and go, right, I want to add these two fractions together, let's find a common denominator, etc. And then you can actually check whether 7 over 6 here is your actual answer by using your calculator. So please use your calculator in the most efficient way possible so you can guarantee in this question your two marks for this. Now, if you want to check out all the different categories of which topics appear and how uh, often they appear, so whether they're certain, often, sometimes, almost certain, all the information is there for you for paper two. Again, I haven't said this so far in the video, but it comes from the last 17 papers. So these predictions are always staying up to date and we're taking the very latest papers that are available to us. Now, if you're interested in predicted papers, and again, these were really, really popular last year, then on my website, so you can check that out below, gingermathematician.com, again, you can find my predicted papers and give yourself that real competitive edge and really see, again, independently where you are in your revision, are you getting a consistent A grade on these predicted papers? And these predicted papers are based on the frequency analysis you see in this video. So we try and make it proportional so you get a fair spread of all the different topics. Now, if you want to get these papers at a slight discount, now the easiest way to do that is to join my newsletter that is also in the description below, where you also get regular updates about IGCSE, IB, and A-level maths. So once you finish your IGCSEs, again, you're gonna get more information about IB and more information about A-level as well. Again, you can join that newsletter by clicking down in the description. Right on to paper four, and no surprises here, we have volume surface area of 3D shapes. Again, this is slightly up upper 88%, always around that almost certain category. Again, can often be like the very first question on the paper, so some standard volume, density, uh, working out surface area questions, but can appear slightly later in the paper as well. Um, sometimes what they'll do though, uh, particularly in question D, question E, in one of these big long questions on paper four, is they'll try and add a little bit of algebra in here. Now one thing that students do ask me is, do we have a formula sheet? Now, 2025, it's very, very different, but in November 2024, notice they generally give you the complicated formulae in brackets. So you don't need to learn all the really complicated formulae, but of course you need to know those standard formulae, circumference, area of a circle, area of a triangle, and so on. So just be aware of that. On to quadratics, again, slightly down here in the often category. However, quadratics is a sneaky kind of topic because it can appear in topics that you don't really expect. So often you'll get the, okay, x squared minus x minus six equals to zero, use the quadratic formula to solve, that's kind of your classic quadratic question. But what can happen here is that you get something like this, where you have area of two shapes, and you have some information between the area of the two shapes, and then you generate a quadratic out of it. So even though it says here 65% down, in reality, it can kind of sneak its way into different topics. And when you get to A-level and IB, that becomes even more important as well. Differentiation, again, slightly up here, I got 100%, which is no surprise. They love putting differentiation questions into paper four, very occasionally in paper two. And here is a very, very typical question, working out stationary points, in this case, of this cubic. Again, it's a standard process here. You need to differentiate equal to zero, use that second derivative to help out whether it's a maximum point or a minimum point. These things are very, very common. Again, check out the video above if you need a huge revision of all things differentiation. 
On to sketching graphs, now up here at 82%, so in the almost certain category, again, this kind of question can vary quite a lot. Here, this is a cubic of some kind in the factorized form, and you need to sketch where it crosses the X and Y axis. Again, four mark question, which is pretty generous considering you've already got it factorized, so you could already work out a lot of these things from the brackets you get given. Now, probability, again, slightly down 88%, but again, over paper two and paper four is going to appear in some way. <laughs> Ironically here, they don't use a Venn diagram, but they use the letters Venn diagram to actually do a probability question. Again, the key thing with probability questions is checking whether the letters in this case are replaced or not, whether it's conditional or unconditional. Again, that's going to make that difference between a B and an A grade for certain. Again, look at the amount of marks that you're given. That's a good clue on how much calculation you actually need to do in this kind of question. Uh, statistics. So we've got statistics here, again, up at 135%. No surprise whatsoever. Again, lots of different ways that they can test you. Cumulative frequency, histograms, and box plots is one approach. However, one thing you should not forget to revise is to work out the estimate of the mean. Comes up a lot. I'm going to put this in a big box. I'm going to put some stars by this because it's that important to make sure that you know it. Again, remember, you need to find the midpoint of these class intervals, again, using the frequency times mid interval to work out the estimate of the mean. Very important. I'm talking to you there. Very important. OK, percentage calculations. Again, we're into the certain category. Again, not a surprise here. Again, the difficulty can vary from fairly straightforward questions to something a little bit strange as well. So something like this here. So the rate of interest for the first year is something. End of the second year, the overall is this percentage. Work out the second year. So these can be a bit tricky, particularly those part C questions and part D questions as well. And the frequencies you can see there in front of you. So you can see what is certain, what is almost certain, what is often, etc. There are topics that we haven't really talked about. Things like similarity at 64.7%. So be aware there are topics like that, coordinate geometry that haven't been featured in this video, but also very, very important to make sure you've covered. So you've got a good spread of all those IGCSE topics. And if you don't know where to start with your IGCSE revision and you're totally overwhelmed by everything going on with all the other different exams that you have, the first thing I'd recommend that you check out is the video right in front of you where I do an IGCSE math cram session in just 30 minutes. And the great thing about this, it only takes 30 minutes of your time. You get a very good feeling of what topics you have a good understanding of. Maybe you're very good solving with linear equations, but then you need to practice, you know, those similarity questions. You need to practice those circle theorems that we haven't talked about in this video. If you want to see that video, then click on it right in front of you, because that will get you up to speed on what you need to revise.